Hello, how's it going? In this video, I'm going to be playing around with Ada, specifically working on making a linked list data structure. Now, in this project that I've got, I'll just go ahead and run it. Currently, I am using Ada SDL because, well, it's a good library. It has nothing to do with this data structure. Maybe at a later point, I would like to actually display the data structure. So that's why I've got it for the time being. I just wanted to add a little addendum to the previous video that I made, which was on installing SDL Ada. Now, Lucretia, the author of this um, package, has helpfully included an update, which is basically, as you can see here, there are some changes which have not been pushed to the Allier index yet. And you can sort of bypass all of that by using this GitHub address. But yeah, otherwise things are pretty straightforward and it's business as usual. And I'm gonna get in and do the data structure. So there are two files I'm gonna to need to make. I'm going to need to make a specification of the data structure and then the body of the data structure. So I'll go ahead and I'll call this list and this will be my ADA specification file. I'm gonna make a generic data structure. So I'll put in, take in a generic parameter. This will be T. Now declaring this as private simply states that this T could literally be any variable at all. Okay, so um, this package will depend on this generic parameter. Now I'm gonna have two things. I'm gonna have my node, and then I'm going to have my pointer to my node. I'll call that a link. And this will be an access type to a node. So this has sort of been specifying the node uh, record type but we haven't really specified it. So we just had to sort of forward declare it so we could make an access to it. So let me just go in. This is gonna be a record. And we're gonna have two things. We're gonna have an underlying value, which will be of type T. And then we'll have a neck, which will be a pointer, basically. So this is the basic definition of the data type. Let's make things a little bit bigger. Um, but the next thing I'm gonna to need to do is define the operations I can do with this. So for this one, I'm gonna keep it really simple. I'm just gonna insert an element at the head, remove an element at the head, and get the length of the list. Okay, so for the head, um, in these cases, it's going to be a link, but because we're going to be modifying the list, we need in out access. And same thing for removal, but then for getting the length, we're only doing read access. So we'll just have in, which is the default when we specify a parameter. And then for the element, this will be just our generic type. Okay, so I'm just going to make my body now, my package body. So I'll have my Ada body file, and here's where we'll specify the package body list. So let's dive into it. And you can see here, we're getting a, just a ton of errors. This is just lighting it up. In my experience, for some reason, just the VS Code extension doesn't work very well. And I can sort of do this, but then defining new packages sort of breaks the extension. So what I then have to do is reload everything, which is a little bit annoying. So although this is hard to follow along, I'm gonna do it. So. We've got this data and in order to insert this data, I'm going to need to wrap this up together into an into a node. 
and get access to that node so that I can throw it into my list. So I'll declare a variable named new. Why does shift not work on my keyboard? Okay, now the insertion begins. So there are sort of two cases. One case is where we have an empty list. And the other case is when we have some elements. Okay, so in the case where we have an empty list, this head value will be null. And we can test for that. We can say if head is null, then okay. Just set the head to the new node and we're done. Okay, so if we get to this point, then we do have at least one element existing. And in this case, I want to take that new node that I've constructed, set that as the head, and set it such that the new node points to the previous head. So I'll take my new node and set its head to the current head of the list. And then you can see what I'm doing here, the current head of the list becomes that new node. Okay, so then we have removal. So a few funky things are gonna happen here. Um, for one thing, I think it's gonna be helpful. What we wanna do with removal is again, head is looking at the beginning of the list. I want to get rid of that element, but I need to be able to connect, like get the element past head and set it as the new beginning of the list. And just for convenience, I'm gonna keep track of head's next element. But if we've got a head which is non-null, then we probably want to remove it. So I believe Ada has some sort of garbage collection, but from what I've just briefly read online, it's only really active if we're targeting a virtual machine. So I'm going to do something naughty and manually deallocate memory. To do that, I'm going to use a package. I'm going to use ADA unchecked or deallocation even. And then I'm going to define my deallocator. So I have a new procedure. I'm going to call that free. Just like that. And the reason for that, for this, is that ADA's unchecked deallocator is a generic package. So in order to use it, or generic procedure in fact, in order to use it, I'm going to need to pass in concrete types and instantiate that. Okay, but as before, uh, we're gonna have two cases. We're gonna have the case of an empty list, and then we're gonna have the case of some elements. Okay, now the empty list is pretty straightforward to detect. This is the case where the head is null. In the case where the head is null, then no deletion needs to occur. We have an empty thing. We can just return, we're done. In the case where we've got some elements, then the first thing I'll do is keep track of the current head's next element. This is going to become the new head. Then I'm going to set the head to next, but I've missed something, which is in between, I'm gonna to need to free the current head. Okay, so now for getting the length. The idea for getting the length is we start at head and we just keep stepping through, looking at the next element, the next element, and so on, until we hit null, in which case we're at the end. So I'm gonna need two variables here. I'm gonna need my, whoops, my node count which is the number of nodes that I've counted. And then I'm going to need the current node that I'm looking at. And we can start that off at the head value. Okay, so the test here is pretty straightforward. We just wanna keep going so long as the current node is not null. Once we've looked through everything, we'll give back the number of nodes that we saw. Okay, so each time we want to increment 
the node count and then we want to increment the node that we're looking at. Just like that. Now, as you can see, we've sort of choked up our language server. We've got no code completion. So I'm just going to quickly reload the project. Let me just double check this. Unchecked. Please, please, please load. Well, that's something. That is something, at least. I don't know. Oh, yeah. It's just really struggling. Look, I don't know. I, I'll say no more. Okay, so now to actually use our list in a simple example. So one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to specify dependence on the list package. And I'm also going to bring in um, text. Text IO. Just like that. This is just going to be useful for debug purposes for printing out the list. So if we look in here, we've got sort of these definitions, render and, and things. And I'm going to define a new procedure, which I'll use for printing out my linked list. So I have procedure, print, and pretty similar. To the length function I'm going to have the current node I've been jumping the gun a little bit <laughs> sorry so here I've got this um, in list I forgot to actually define that so we've got this linked list generic package that we put in but then similar to the manual deallocation we're going to need to instantiate that package and say hey you know this is what we expect. So I'm going to create a new package, keep it nice and simple, int list, and I'm just going to specify for the type. So this is creating a concrete instance of that generic list. And I'm also going to define my list, which is if I go basically just create yeah a null pointer to start off with an empty list there we go cool so we'll have the current node that we're looking at and we'll also have the node count and we can actually get that straight away this will be an integer and that will be given by go int list and then length So what I'm going to do to print out my linked list is I'm going to print out just a simple debug message like, hey, this is how many nodes are on the list. And then here are all the nodes. So first of all, I'll put there we go. Just using ampersand to concatenate image to get the string representation of the integer. And now I'm going to loop through the list. So I'll go for i in one to node count. And I'll just put out current nodes value that. And then again, I'll set the current node to the next one. And then just for quality of life, I'll put in a new line. Okay, cool. So this is a little janky, I guess, but it does work. And um, what we could do is we could take this print function and actually define it inside the list. Now that will complain because right now I'm using integers and I know that integers can be represented as strings. But in this package, if this is fully generic, Right now, we don't have a guarantee that this generic parameter has an image attribute. We can enforce that, and I might look at that in a future video. This might be a two-part, but um, this works for now. So actually, none of this stuff really has to do with SDL, so I'll just initialize my data right here before I even do anything. So what I'll do is I'll just print out 
my list as it is right now. And then I'll do a few operations. So let me insert. Let's do a few, a few random numbers. So three, 45, two, and then I'll go ahead and remove an element and then I will insert another element. Okay, so fingers crossed, let's find out how this works. Hmm, <laughs> it happens. Okay, so where is this line 53? Oh yeah, okay, uh, whoops, uh, that's not head, that should be no, presenting information and coding. They're not orthogonal skills, but they are linearly independent. Okay, cool. So just get this out of the way. There we have it. So as you can see, we start off with nothing. We insert 12, then we have one element. We insert three, and we can see that the list is growing up to the length of four. Then we remove, and that removes the head, which in this case is two and the new head becomes 45. And then when we insert again, that comes in at the head and the length goes back to four. So I'm happy with that for now. In a future video, I'm going to have a look at a few things, moving this print function over to the list specification and specifying that whatever our generic type is, it can also take a print function. Oh, take, sorry, take an image function. Then inserting things in order so making sure that they don't come in in this random order they can actually be sorted and then further specifying that whatever our data type is our generic data type it has some field that we can take as a key because putting in a list of integers in order is really great but actually having some meaningful data associated with that so you've got some key data and some value data will make this more useful. And then why not um, printing out, actually displaying the list in an SDL window would be pretty cool. But as a first step, this will be it. Anyway, can't think of anything else to say, so all the best and I'll see you again soon. Bye.